Hello and welcome to Digmi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall continue the government schemes in technology sector. We are going to discuss four important schemes here. The first one being National Supercomputing Mission. Right now you can see this is a supercomputer in itself. Right, so National Supercomputing Mission. The second one is scheme across this relates to weather forecast services. The third one is uh, NUDM. That means National urban digital mission and the fourth one is software technology parks of india now most of these schemes they are covered under one specific ministry which is known as ministry of electronics and information technology meity but some of the schemes are specifically covered under a different ministry we will cover that when it comes so national supercomputing mission the name itself is explanatory what are we trying to create we are trying to create a supercomputer for our country the speed of the supercomputer should be 45 petaflops right so petaflops is the unit in which speed of that particular computer will be measured now uh, this scheme was initiated in the year 2015 and it was up to uh, 2022 so this scheme has 7 years of its life and the focus has been to create a better supercomputer infrastructure this is one then to have application oriented things around it so when we talk of the second scheme a scheme called as across it will have many supercomputers and knowledge of these supercomputers their processing will be all linked so that application of the supercomputing cap capacity leads to some good results for our country and also to be able to invest in human capital so these are the three important focus areas of national supercomputing mission right so as i mentioned it was launched in the year 2015 and it is for 7 years now what what if we collect we collect data from important centers research organizations universities academicians and connect all of them together to one network so that network is called as national knowledge network and this is what the supercomputing mission is also going to execute it will connect the distributed computer systems so these distributed computer systems at different places will be connected and the supercomputer will be able to handle all the data right so this has been one of the important purposes this mission is uh, founded by meti as i mentioned and department of science and technology dst but it is implemented by cdac pune and iisc bangalore now these are two premier institutions in the field of uh, uh, first one in the field of computer technology and the second one issc in the field of research right so what are the three phases of this uh, program the first phase is about uh, getting these distributed systems from abroad to india to be able to assemble and understand these systems because india is uh, technologically a little behind uh, as compared to the advanced countries india is going to make a 45 petaflop computer whereas the world has already executed uh, supercomputers to the speed of 500 petaflops and india is trying 45 petaflops right so uh, this is the kind of gap we have and that is the reason the first phase was about incorporating the uh, technology from abroad and assembling it in india so this is how we built three supercomputers param shivai param shakti from from param brahma and after that now uh, the second phase deals with the uh, increasing the speed of supercomputers right so what are we talking of we are talking of non distributed systems non distributed means the whole computer should be located at one place itself so this is a supercomputer and it has got its various processing elements attached it should be present at one place if it is a distributed network then what is the advantage of calling it a supercomputer at one place right so uh, this is is uh, the main theme of it and it will be measured in petaflops right this is important the third phase of it is to connect all different institutions around 70 to 75 different institutions in the country into one network and to operate it under this supercomputer with speed of 45 petaflops right so this is it and national knowledge network is the network that will get formed we know about national knowledge network through digital missions right okay so which are the important computers so supercomputer fuguka this is japanese supercomputer and this is the one which runs with the highest speed and then we have summit and sierra from usa and then sunway is from uh, uh, china all right the second uh, scheme here all you can see behind me are increased are are the natural disasters so here we see urban flooding this is the place where we see droughts drought hit area this is the place where we see tornadoes hitting the place probably a dust storm as well and this is where we see lightning strike and uh, probably very bad weather going to happen at this place and this is where we see cyclones now what if we could predict this kind of weather especially during the times of climate change right this is a great facility which can be potentially provided by the technological developments in a country right and that is why we initiated the scream called as across across means across means uh, atmospheric and climate research modeling 
observation system and services right so this scheme although it seems as if it is a technology scheme but yes it will be run by a ministry called as ministry of earth sciences right so ministry of earth sciences do remember this is not by meti not by ministry of electronics and information technology yes those ministries might come to the aid of this ministry but ministry of earth sciences is the one which utilizes climate data and gives weather forecast so this is where we are talking of atmosphere and climate research so that we are able to predict and apply this for human development right so main objective is to have a advanced weather prediction which can predict weather uh, for next 3 to 5 days very good system okay this is one the second one uh, of it is to be able to apply it in agriculture right so one agriculture second aviation sector the third one is uh, climate services to people and the fourth one is uh, training and capacity building in this field imagine when we go to a different place for tourism sake i went to sonmarg some time back so i could actually see the temperature of that place for today for tomorrow and for day after tomorrow as well these are the kind of services i am talking of climate services to people right aviation meteorological services to people right and then uh, especially for agriculture so these are the kind of predictions this across scheme is going to uh, cater to right now this is these are the kind of services we are talking of and for for this what we need is an upgraded infrastructure and for that we need various institutions so important institution which are going to be a part of the scheme are indian meteorological De department of course this is located at mausam bhavan in delhi the second one is indian institute of tropical meteorology it is located in pune so what 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 is it about this is again about a supercomputer placed here the third one is national center for medium range weather forecasting this organization is also located in noida and has a supercomputer attached to it and the fourth one is national center for ocean information services now these are the different kind of uh, organization this is located in hyderabad so all these three organizations along with imd will be able to collect data interpret it and then release it for public welfare for what welfare for welfare in these particular areas these particular avenues provide weather forecast provide ways in which we can predict a uh, disaster happening to provide services for agricultural developments and aid and uh, and help in uh, during these times of crisis right so across do remember across by ministry of earth sciences the third scheme is uh, national digital urban digital mission nudm this is under ministry of housing and urban affairs and ministry of electronics and information technology see both of them are working together why because uh, it is an urban digital mission we did cover the scheme while we were covering the cities the schemes related to cities now uh, imagine a city which provides all its services digitally so what are we talking of we are talking of population management we are talking of transport services we are talking of the uh, important government services like education and health through online media we are talking of presence of various opportunities of jobs and employment all data connected online through digital media we are also going to enable cleaning the whole city through digital media right so there are many many medium which can be utilized to make the city more digital in nature and that is how national urban digital mission is in focus it, its main idea is to convert all the physical data into digital data so that its utility transparency objectivity also increases this also increases the efficiency of the system right so it what does it do it creates a shared digital infrastructure for a urban india right facilitates job for people so what is the main agenda of living in a city right so the main agenda is to improve the quality of life this is one quality of life the second one is economic services and this is where the digital mission will be helping us improving quality of life and providing better economic services right so for cities uh, this is going to be done by 2022 and for towns by 2024 national urban digital mission do remember the participation of two different ministries right meti and ministry of urban affairs and housing now is being keeping citizens at the center but government local bodies and urban local bodies these are at the periphery this is how the scheme will operate so it will also utilize the scheme uh, of startup ecosystem and various researchers but keeping citizens at the center national urban digital mission all right the fourth scheme for today is uh, software technology parks of india now the first time we released a software policy was in the year 1986 and therefore we did need some infrastructure some institution for it 
and software technology park was instituted in the year 1991 1992 now this was the time when we started this software technology park of india and now india has just last week india introduced its uh, 61st software technology park and that is in the state of nagaland now the main important mission here of this software technology park is to create softwares so that we are able to export them so objective is export of software professional services from india what are we talking of we are talking of information technology and information technology enabled services ites what are we talking of we are talking of business processing outsourcing we are talking of knowledge processing outsourcing so we are talking of these important entities under software technology promotion right we are also promoting electropreneur scheme so electropreneur what is electropreneur electropreneur promotion now uh, we are talking of the electronics industry here now electronics industry is very much related to the software industry electronic chip building manufacturing and uh, this is related to software technology because it is software technology which enables the formation of a chip in an automated manner right and therefore this electropreneur scheme is going to be assisted through software technology now india is already providing these kind of services for promotion of electronic goods but this is not in india countries abroad are hiring indians to do this job but now stpi has taken a lead in this particular case another important component of the scheme is the next generation incubation scheme ngis now here the name itself suggests what it means next generation incubation so what are we trying to do we are trying to build a software system which are next generation in nature and then we are again going to export it to the different countries and again which ministry the ministry is ministry of electronics and information technology right the main idea is to export software professional services this has already increased because of corona times india software potential and its export has increased so that is why software technology park of india are in news these were some specific important schemes in technology sector If you like this video do show some love on us through likes comments and shares if you subscribe to the channel you will receive timely updates thanks for watching